a disgrace happened. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that I like to add a little skit at the beginning of every single video. But this time, things didn't went as planned. The footage was blurry beyond repair. It's an issue I noticed while I was filming it. And I thought I fixed it, but turns out I didn't. The camera wouldn't work as it was trying to stay in and out of focus all the time. I can't film it again because of the implications of needing another weekend for setting everything up, plus having to borrow some props from my friends. Ah, fuck me, I'm so angry with myself. It was gonna be so good. Imagine Huron Blackheart going into a clinic because his tummy hurts. Then the doctor comes in with the x-ray results and points out to the big old melt a hole in his chest. Huron believed he was just hungry and the doctor is like, I don't even know how are you still alive, neither how did you manage to drive yourself into this clinic. I don't know how to fix it, so I'm just gonna stand in here until you eventually collapse. Huron threatens the life of the doctor if he refuses to heal him. So, unreasonable injuries call for unreasonable solutions. So the doctor calls another doctor to try and fix him, and turns out big holes in chests are his field of expertise. Uh, I was going to use two yogurts as a stethoscope. So how does he fix him? He takes some newspaper balls to fill the hole, then he adds a little bit of mud punch, and then he paints the whole thing red so he goes faster. And in complete orc fashion, it just works. Then I'm so angry I lost that footage. But let's try to move on. This is a commission I did way back then in November. But I couldn't bring myself to finish editing this video because I was so packed with commissions. I was tasked to make a custom Huron Blackheart model, which was way harder than I thought it would be. I had a general idea on how I wanted him to look based on other people's designs. And it seemed there was a general consensus of using Havoc armor, maybe because that would make him stand taller in a 25mm base. GW, please stop this nonsense and update his model. You can't even buy him as of now. And if he comes back as a made to order, I don't want to buy a 20 plus year old resin model with broken fingertips. And look at Hamadria. Look at him. He's too cute for the 41st millennium. I bet you he gets bullied by Narlings. And going back to topic, as I was saying, Huron Blackheart was a hard one to pull. Why? Usually while reposing, I try to avoid pinning to save some time. But Huron ended up with more iron within than Perturabo, which is lower accurate if you ask me, considering he got shanked and half his body was replaced by cybernetics. I leave it there. But before getting into details, let's see some greens first. I have to fix this chair. For 
Dus who may not know him, Euron Blackheart is the leader of the Red Corsairs Warband. He was previously known as Luft Huron from the Austral Claws Space Marine chapter. In summary, Huron didn't want to pay his taxes and hired more people that he's allowed to protect his field, which a space book says bad. The war shaked the Badak sector and Huron Rebellion was put down by the combined forces, the Inquisition and loyalist Space Marine chapters. Huron fled for the Maelstrom, a war rift in the eastern fringes of the galaxy, where his forces joined chaos. A motherfucker built a casino with black jars of hookers inside of it. And speaking of this art, I chose it as the main guideline for this conversion. It took me a month to get it shipped into my mailbox. The parts list used in this conversion are a couple of chaos juggernaut colors, in case something goes wrong, a military tempestus Scion flamer kit, most importantly the backpack and the hose that comes with it, a chaos havoc champion, and a regular chaos marine axe. Last but not least, a balloon's claw, and a primaris captain iron halo. When I was sketching the idea of the conversion, I initially thought I could get away with just having to reposition his right leg. But when I got the model in my hands, the truth was revealed. The left leg was leaning back a bit and the foot was in a terrible position. How I didn't notice that? I had to cut my way through it and rebuild all the leg joints. Not to mention the Havoc comes with terrible mode lengths, which surprised me because it is a fairly recent kit. I tried to avoid pinning the legs down, but the structure was too weak and had me waste a sculpting session because the ceiling broke. Mind you, when you glue two plastic beads that aren't supposed to go together, you can just go to town and begin a sculpting. You need to wait for the chemical reaction to finish, and that might take a few hours, because you want the bond to be strong enough to handle an invasive process like pushing fresh green stuff into the gaps. So, not being able to circumvent this, I had to spend the next hour pinning him from the waist down. And I also had to cut the booty plate away, so the right leg would fit into position. And glue it back once I was done with it. Because I needed to wait until the weekend to have enough time to work on the body, I chose to work in less time consuming tasks. I pinned the head so I could comfortable the sculpt it. After removing the top knot, I cut a chunk out of it in order to refill it later with green stuff, so I could represent the metal plating Huron has on his head. I admit I miscalculated the cut a bit, so I had to fix it later with an hybrid mix, as you can see it in the different coloration of the epoxy. Mixing green stuff with milliput makes it a lot easier to glad. I also tried to change the expression and make him smile. For the eye lens, I tried something, but I wasn't too satisfied with the result. So I scrapped it and did a regular GW round optic. I also added a new ring, because you don't need to be in check with the latest pirate trends. The weekend came and I was ready to put my hands on the body section. The chest was divided in three sessions. The first day in the morning I did the basic shape of the body and I let it dry for 12 hours until the sun disappeared. I stayed overnight to add the cables with my always trusty roll maker. You can see that the cables on the belly are deformed. That's because I pressed the belt against it to create a good fit for it later. But we'll get there. Now we are going to talk about the rivets. Chaos loves that bling, but Huron has too many arrows to fit them properly in such a small area. And my trembling hands were not going to take me any further, so I chose to go with a more minimalistic design.
After it dried the next day, it was time to sculpt all the soft joints from the middle section. I could have switched to a needle or a sculpting hook, but I'm quite used to my all-purpose tool, which works very well with this kind of links. When sculpting the joint rings, it is better to wait for at least one hour before carving them. In the first hour, you should be focusing on smoothing and getting the volumes right. Then it was time to wield the power claw, which I also pinned down to honor the traditions established with this model. For the flamer's muscle, I tried to file down the edges of a small cut of plastic art tube. But turns out, plastic art isn't a great material to sand. But hey, at least it gave a good skeleton to work with. Next, it was time to bring all the missing armor bits with green put, as it is an easier beauty to blend and smooth. I also had to scrap and reward the heel plates, as they were twisted in a way that would not sweep the feet. The chainmail tower was a tricky one. I knew I couldn't fit a tool between the legs to school the chain links from behind, I and mean, sticking it would have meant that I would have to alter the contact surface, which is a no-no if you want to have a wood seat. Instead, I decided to craft a ragged cloth tower and I'll scoop the chainmail pattern on top of it. I used a green pot again to ensure it will be rigid when it dries and allow me to sculpt on top of it without the need of adding more thickness. I will let this dry until tomorrow before adding more details. So better to switch over to doing the cables for the flaming system. By giving the cables a skeleton, I can also nail them down for a non-contact drying process so it doesn't flatten on one side. The cables were ready. And I found out recently that the best way to make cable links is these bijuterie bits available at any arts and crafts store. You can buy a million of them for peanuts, it's disgusting and they come in different diameters, but it's better to glue them out with super glue, as they don't react very well to plastic glue. Last, it was time to build the backpacking. I drilled a hole into the Prometheum bottle's valve so I could push a cable inside. I glued the iron halo into the axle, and then I proceed to sculpt a few pouches onto the Tabard Astrophis. Maybe that's where he keeps his pocket money, I don't know. I also want to point out that the Promethean bottles are hidden behind the backpack, because I did not want them to peep over it like in the original model, as that seems an easy target. After all, I'm an engineer in real life, and you know what else engineers love? SAFETY REGULATIONS Tyrant of Badat. 
the most based Chaos Lord in the entire galaxy. This master of the grill is about to cook some loyalist scum. I took some liberties with the painting and spread some neon green lights. For the reds, I followed a recipe I found on Instagram by fellow hobbyist Shiva Paints Minis. The burning corpse is an attached to the hand as it was not clear if that's something the final owner of the mini would like. Best part is that he actually isn't glued to his base. So in case GW updates his model, the customer can easily switch to a 40mm base. Don't ask me about the golds, because it's been so long I forgot what the heck I did. Yamadria, on the other hand, Oh shit! I forgot about that critter! Basically, Namadria was a Sklag's build as I was not satisfied with any mini to proxy us. I think I've spent a total of 8 towers on him. And I used a steel wire as a skeleton and regular green stuff in a 50 50 ratio. I wanted to accentuate on the vicious scavenger look. That's why I sculpted him eating from a Space Marine's helmet. I worked in layers so I could ease things up. First day, I did primary volumes. The next day, I did the secondaries. Third day, details and fixes. And finally on the fourth, scales. This counts as my second mini ever. If you want to see my first mini built from scratch, you can always go check it in my scales part 3 tutorial video. As you may have seen, I have skipped some of these steps to keep it short. But if you have any questions regarding this conversion, you can always ask them in the comments down below and I'll try my best to answer them. I had big plans for 2023 with little to no commission work, but everything went to shit and we are now halfway through the year. There's videos that I've been planning for well over a year now, like... The Zelda Exodite that has been sitting in this drawer since April last year now. Ah, uh, fuck me. So many conversions and so little time. Until next time, I've been Obsessive Converter. Stay safe, heretics.